What's going on guys? Welcome to the second part of the average true range uh, tutorial video uh, within our uh, mathematics and stock indicators in Python tutorial series. That's a mouthful. Where we left off, uh, I was telling you guys all about ATR, now we actually want to start programming it. Um, for the purposes of this video and probably the next uh, quite a few stock indicator videos, I decided to go ahead and just upload a sample data file so everybody can follow along perfectly. Uh, for the first video that we did, it was nice because we only really needed to consider two data points to, to do the basics. Uh, but since we're going to be incorporating it in a chart, it just kind of makes sense to go ahead and use like a, long, a little bit longer of a data set. Uh, so I did upload a sample data file. So it's going to be syntax.com slash sample data dot text. And pay attention again to the camel casing sample capital D A T A dot T X T. Hit enter. And there's some sample data. Just literally highlight, copy, paste that into a notepad file, a dot text file, and you can uh, continue on. And just in case anybody's you know not too familiar with uh, how the paths work, it must be in the same directory as your script that you're writing. So right now, this sample data dot text file is in the same directory as this atr tutorial dot pi file. So same folder, right? Anyway, continuing on now. Uh, what we want to do in this one is we're going to use NumPy and so we're going to import NumPy as NP. This will make it easier for us as well. We're going to build it around the idea of NumPy and unpacking this data like we do in the charting um, application. So it makes meshing it that much easier. Now we're going to define our sample data which is going to be uh, open and then it's sample data.text. We want to open it with the intention to read and then we're going to go ahead and just read it into memory. Now we're going to split that data and that's going to be e equal to sample data dot split and we're going to split it by a new line. Subsequently we're going to use that numpy load text so uh, and we're going to unpack it so we're going to say date close p high p low p open p. I do this because when you kind of want to keep things as uniform as possible and close is an operation within Python and then open is also an operation within Python as you can see that we did it right up here. So that's why I add the P to it but if you only did open P and then the rest you know it would be hard to follow. So anyway then volume equals and then it's np.loadtxt what text do we want to load? We want to load a uh, split yeah split data uh, the delimiter, I'm just going to hit enter. Whenever you make like long lists, if you ha have a comma there, you can just hit enter and you'll go down. It's nice. Uh, so I don't run off the screen. Then we're going to say uh, delimiter equals comma, since that's it's comma separated variables. And then we want to unpack equals true. And the main purpose for unpack equals true is just so that we can do what we've done here and say like a group of variables equals this. Um, so that's the idea there. Now we're going to go ahead and define uh, TR because right, average true range is just the exponential moving average of a true range. So first we want to define true range and then we want to do an exponential moving average of it. True range is going to require um, today's date, the open high low close, and yesterday's close for calculation, right? Um, so we're going to say in here we're going to put the variables of D for date and then close, high, low, open, so C-H-L-O, then Y-C. So obviously close, high, low, open, that's considering of today, and then Y-C will just be yesterday's close. Now we're going to start saying uh, kind of what we did in that first video, right? We kind of just defined three random variables, and then we gave the parameters for them. So the first one, remember with true range, the question was um, the true range was the highest of either uh, or one of these, right? So that's all we really need to do to calculate true range. So um, that first one was, uh, so we'll say x, today's high minus today's low. So what was the difference there? y equals the absolute value, don't forget that, of today's high minus yesterday's close. And then z, we'll just say the third option was the absolute value of the low of today minus yesterday's close. So in theory, if yesterday's close was like really high, and then today's low was really low, that would, you know, trigger Z. 
And then if you know yesterday's close was really low, but today's high was really high, uh, and yesterday's close was lower than today's low, then Y would be the case, and so on. So now what we want to do is just for debugging purposes, we're going to go want to go ahead and print out X, Y, and Z. Eventually we'll remove those, but just in case something goes wrong, uh, and then we also want to make sure our logic is all right, we'll print them out first. Now what we want to do is if if Y is now normally we would just do greater than x and then less than z uh, so or rather if x is greater than y and greater than z sorry i was thinking about what i was about to say and so i mis misspoke there uh, then tr would equal x right but keep in mind that fairly often what's going to wind up happening is for example today's low will be um, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a good example here. Like there could, in theory, open could be the same price as yesterday's close, and that open could be the low. Therefore, x and y could be identical, right? And then also, if x and y are identical, it's totally possible that all three of these could be. Um, well, I guess not this one. Like these two could be identical, and the. Uh, let's see, the, yeah, I guess really the only ones that would be identical are these. It's early morning again, so my mind's not working very fast. But anyway, it's, it's totally possible, and I'm, I, I think there's another combination, but just uh, not enough coffee yet. Anyway, so really what we need to do is for all of these, let's just go ahead and say if, if y is greater than or equal to x, and then, and then if x is, or if y is less than or equal to x, and then if x is greater than or equal to z, tr equals x. So we're just going to throw greater than or equal to signs all around this. Otherwise, uh, we're going to trip up probably. Uh, I mean, it's it's definitely uh, going to happen where x is the same as y fairly often. Uh, so anyway, uh, now the next thing we're going to use is an elif statement again. Uh, just like before, you want to use elif so you're not running through all of these. So if this one's triggered, it's not going to waste its time and run through these. So if x is less than or equal to y, yet y is greater than or equal to z, then tr equals y. Elif, uh, x is less than or equal to z, yet z is greater than or equal to y, tr equals z. Now we're going to go ahead and print out tr so we can know that we uh, hopefully did it right. <laughs> And in fact, let's go ahead and make it print D T R. And then also this uh, function is going to return uh, that same data. So we're just printing it out so we know exactly what it's returning, so we know if it's returning exactly what we really wanted. Now, uh, to apply T R uh, to this data here, we're going to use a while loop, which is a very easy uh, way to do it. Uh, so we're going to say x equals 1, and we do that so we start at the first or the one-th element in the array. I always say firsteth or one-th because it's not the first element in the array, right? Because that's not how arrays are measured. The first element in the array is the zeroth element. So that if you think I'm just like, I don't know, an idiot for saying firsteth or one-th, um, just trying my best to make it clear, actually. But anyway, uh, so we start at 1 because that's where we, we need to start because we need to consider yesterday's. Um, you could also write into this formula that if there is no yesterday, can just consider uh, this option right here. I see no point. That's a lot of extra processing. So we're just going to say tr dates, or do it this way, tr dates equals, sorry, empty array, and then true ranges equals empty array. And while x is less than, let me scroll down a little bit, while x is less than the length of date, we're going to do tr, oops, tr date true range equals tr, and we're going to call that function. So we're going to call this tr function. Usually, whenever I have like a lot of lines like this, what I'll do to remind myself the parameters, I'm just going to copy this, come down here, hit a little comment here. And actually, I'll do it abo right above uh, this. Uh, it just serves as a good reminder what the calculation of TR actually is. So we want to do date, 
and then the X um, spot in that date array or date list rather. Actually, it's a NumPy array, so it is an array. Usually, I call lists arrays. Anyway, close p x uh, high p x low p x uh, open and uh, we'll just do this. So it's, it stays on the screen. Open p x uh, then close. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah, close, close P, and then here for yesterday's close, it's X minus one, right? So that's why we must start at X equals one. So X minus one can equal zero, and we can start at the zero with element or the first element of that array. So that is uh, that. Uh, so now we are calculating the true range uh, and the, the actual date, so we can just return them both easily. So then we're going to say tr dates dot append tr date, and then we're going to do true ranges dot append uh, true range. And it's hard to be both clear in the code and also clear as far as so you don't make typos on yourself. But do make sure that you're doing tr dates with an s for the actual array that you're appending to, and ranges with an s. That you're appending to, and then you're just appending the singular here, because uh, in theory this is actually the true range. Like this is the true range, not true ranges. But since we're programming it, I think it makes it easier to say this is the true range. Each one is a true range, and you're adding it to true ranges. Anyway, moving on. Don't forget your x plus equals one. Otherwise, you will get a nice infinite loop. So uh, now that we've done that, we should have. Um, everything we want and just just for kicks we could go ahead and print a uh, true range and just hopefully we get a number that looks uh, like a legitimate true range <laughs> right um, I wish I could remember sample data it's either using Starbucks I think it's Starbucks prices so. anyway it should just be somewhat um, let me pull up the sample data so like you can okay I think it is Starbucks so it's 56 so if, if we're getting if we're returning true range values of say 100 um, we have a problem right because that stock did not move by 100 you know basis points right so anyway uh, just keep that in mind so I think we're ready to run this and we'll just see our output so let's go ahead and run it uh, we're still printing out. Um, all this values up here. So we are, we well, I guess we didn't totally determine. Um, so where we print date and tr. So here we can see that we first, uh, we print x, y, z, and then we're printing date and tr. So this would be x, y, z, and then date and tr. As you can see, what, oops, sorry, that was way off the screen. x, y, z, we see 1.37 is the highest number and then we printed out the date and then the true range um, was indeed the right number. So at least that we've, we've seen that it's working. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this. Subsequently, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop it from printing out since we are printing true range here. Now let's run it one last time so it's nice and clear for us. So again, uh, that's about right for a $50 stock. Uh, it's you know about $1 at the max. Uh, or maybe even two dollars. Yeah, we got a couple that were over two dollars here. Um, so anyway, um, that looks about right for us. Uh, so it would appear that we are indeed calculating true range correctly. And now we just need to convert it to average true range. Now, since the conversion to average true range is very simple, uh, we already have exponential moving average defined in a previous video. If you don't have it on hand, the quickest way to get it would just be to go to centdex.com slash starting point dot pi drag this over we don't even need the full thing we just need the exponential moving average part highlight that copy that move that over just paste it wherever you want because it's going to be in our starting point script so it doesn't really matter we're not going to be copying and pasting this part of it anyway now what we want to do is say so we've already got true ranges being appended right here right so all we have to do is just run this exponential moving average on it. So ATR equals 
x moving average of what true ranges with you know what window so this is the data window right or values window so what's the window well Wells Wilder would always suggest 14 so that's what we'll do I would argue probably for a 5 but uh, 14 is what he suggests so 14 and then we'll go ahead at the end of this and print out ATR so now we don't need to print that anymore now let's run this yes and here is our NumPy array of uh, the exponential moving average, or the ATR. Cool. So now that we've done that, what we want to do now is incorporate that into our chart so you can see the exact same chart I was showing you earlier. And so that's what we'll be doing in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support, the subscriptions, and until next time.